What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we are looking at transversal lines. Let's go. So what do we need to remember today? Well, we need to remember that a transversal line cuts across two or more other lines and therefore creating a relationship with them. So if we look at this first example, we have line A and we have line B which are running in parallel to each other. Now, if you're not sure what parallel means, it means that they could run on forever in either direction and never cross. Think about things like train tracks. And in this case, we have line C, which is this line that intersects the two parallel lines, and we're going to call that line C. And that's our transversal line. And we can see that it crosses our line and makes these distinct points on our railway tracks. And now what we're going to learn is the different angles that form around there and the relationships between them. We actually have four different relationships and four different types of angles here. We have corresponding, we have the alternative interior, the consecutive interior, and the vertically opposite. So let's have a little look. What we should be able to see is when we have a transversal line cutting through a set of parallel lines, we create eight angles. We can see angle one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. Now, to understand this, what we've got to try and think about is all of the knowledge we know about angles on straight lines and angles around a point so far. Well, let's look at this as a straight line. And what we should know is that the angles on a straight line equal 180. Now, because these lines are parallel, the transversal line that cuts through them is going to be creating the same angles on both lines. Let me show you what I mean. Angle 1, just here, let's colour it purple, is going to be exactly the same as angle 5 just here because they are both being cut by the transversal line and line A and B are parallel. So what we can say is, is that angle 1, and I can show that with this little symbol here, angle 1 is equal to angle 5. And they are corresponding angles. The other corresponding angles would be angle 2, would be corresponding to angle 6. So angle 2 is equal to angle 6. Angle 4 is going to be corresponding to angle 8. So angle 4 is equal to angle 8. And lastly, angle 3 is going to be equal to angle 7. So angle 3 equals angle 7. And they are all the corresponding angles. Okay, let's have a little look at the alternative interior angles. Well, what's an interior angle? Interior is the inside. Your interior in your house is the inside of your house. An interior decorator is someone who decorates houses inside. So we have to look at the inside angles. So if these are my parallel lines, only the angles inside, this one, this one, this one, and this one, the ones that we would consider interior. So let me put my labels back, and I would have angle one, two, three, and four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. Now we've got to think about what alternative means. Alternative means if I have numbers in a number line, one, two, three, four, five, six. Alternative means we go from one, but we skip two, and we go straight to three. We skip four, we go straight to five, and so on and so on. So we're missing out a number each time. So in other words, if I started with three, I wouldn't come to four, I'd go straight round to five. So my alternative interior angles would mean that angle 3 is equal to angle 5. And if I started at 4, I would skip 5 and go straight to 6. And therefore, angle 4 is equal to angle 6. And let's think about why that is. Well, if we look at angle 3, this angle just here, we're saying we think it's the same as angle 5. Well, that's because we know that the full angle on this straight line has to equal 180 and the full angle on this straight line has to equal 180. Therefore, those together must equal 360. So as the bigger angle opens, depending on how the line C intersects my parallel lines, as this big angle opens, the small angle will close, and exactly the same thing will happen on this other side as well. As the bigger angle opens, the smaller angle will close. And because they're running parallel, they're gonna do it in exactly the same way, Therefore, the alternative interior angles are going to be equal to one another. Now let's look when it's not equal, and let's look at the consecutive interior. Now the consecutive interior angles are angles inside that are consecutive to one another. So 4, 
and 5 are going to be consecutive. So angle 4 and angle 5 are going to be consecutive, but they are not equal. We can see one is an obtuse angle, one is an acute angle. And angle 3 and angle 6 are also consecutive, but they are also not equal. Now let's look at our final one, the vertically opposite angles. This is not saying interior, so we can talk about all eight angles again. And we're looking for an angle that's opposite it from the point of where the angles meet. So if I look at angle 2, for example, look at the angle point, and then look opposite, I can see angle 4. And angle 2 and angle 4 are equal. So angle 2 equals angle 4. But there's more. We could say angle 1 is vertically opposite angle 3, and they are also equal. We can see angle 5 is opposite angle 7, and they are equal. And finally, we can see angle 6 and angle 8 are also vertically opposite, and they are also equal. So finally, what do we know? Well, we know that the corresponding angle, angle 1 and angle 5, are the same. But we also know that the vertically opposite is the same as that. So angle 3 and angle 7 are also the same as angle 1 and 5. So angle 1 equals angle 3, which also equals angle 5, and it also equals angle 7. And the other corresponding angle, 2 and 6, they must also be the same. So angle 2 equals angle 6, but because they're vertically opposite to 4 and 8, they must also equal angle 4 and angle 8. So there is actually only two different measurements of angle within this whole group of eight angles. Lots of interesting things happening when a transversal line cuts over two parallel lines. So now it's your turn. Have a go at using the information we've just learned to tell me what the angles of angle A, B, and C are. If you need some help, go back in the video and pause where you can see all the information and see if you can work out what these angles are. Once you have, put your answer in the comment section. I'm going to try and look at them all. And there you have it. That is a transversal line cutting through two parallel lines. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, think about subscribing to the channel or heading over to themathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more videos for everything you need to know about your age group maths. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Peace out.